further continue with the module that is a uh, computational models in embedded design okay so these are the some very important models okay uh, some uh, six models are there uh, in which the first uh, first three models are very very important ones okay one question from any of these three models will be appearing for the exam point of view okay so let us discuss now the commonly used computational models in embedded system designs are these six models okay that is first is data flow graph model that is dfg then we have control data flow graph model cdfg then we have state machine model sequential program model concurrent or communicating process model then the object oriented model okay so these last two models are not so important okay but the first four models are very important ones so one by one let us discuss each models in brief okay so, so now we have first is data flow graph model okay that is a dfg model the data flow graph dfg translates the data processing requirements into a data flow graph it is a data driven model in which the program execution is determined by the provided data okay so this data flow graph model is simply the translation of data that is whatever the input provided to any model okay that input would be enhanced and improvised using the data flow graph okay in in which the data would be highlighted in a particular way so as to work the embedded system in a particular manner okay so that's why we use this model called as data flow graph this model emphasizes on the data and operations on the data which performs which transforms the input data to the output data the embedded applications which are computational intensive and data driven are modeled using the dfg model so here we have dsp applications are the typical examples for this data flow graph model so this dfg data flow graph is a visual model in which the operation on the data process is represented using a block or a circle and data flow is represented using arrows okay in an inward arrow to the process or the circle represents the input data and the outward arrow from the process or the circle represents the output data in the dfg notation suppose one of the functions in our application contains the computational requirement so they have given here that is x equal to a plus b and y is equal to x minus c so for this these two functions let us try to draw the data flow graph model you see here this figure illustrates the implementation of a, a data flow graph model for implementing these requirements so here we have x is equal to a plus b right so here you see here a and b are the inward arrows which is given to the data flow node okay and the outward output produced by this is they are getting added up so this is plus here then we have x that is the output produced so that would be x equal to a plus b then we have y is equal to x minus c so now here what we have x is already there and one more node would be coming that is c so these two would be getting subtracted in the data flow node minus so y the output produced here is y now so that would be y equal to x minus c so like this the data flow graph model works okay so this is not new to you guys so if you try to analyze the figure with the expressions you would be coming to know okay so this is the data flow graph model so in this data flow graph model a data path is the data flow path from input to output okay which you have seen just now a data flow graph model dfg model is said to be a cyclic dfg model if it doesn't contain multiple values okay if it doesn't does not have any multiple values then it's then it is said to be a cyclic dfg model for example the input variable and multiple output values for a given set of inputs so feedback inputs output is fed back to inputs events etc are some examples for non acyclic inputs okay where the output is fed back to the input okay those things are the examples for non acyclic inputs a dfg model translates the program as a single sequential process execution okay so this point you need to be remembering it is a single sequential process execution we don't have any multiple events to be occurring in this data flow graph model so this was about dfg so now let us discuss with the one more example that is control data flow graph model that is the cdfg model okay and let's try to compare between this with the dfg and let us see what and all are the changes in the dfg model uh, the dfg model is a data driven model in which the execution is controlled by data and it does not involve any other control operations okay so this is one thing which you have seen in the data flow graph in the cdfg it is used for modeling applications involving 
conditional program execution so there would be here we have some conditions to be followed okay based on that conditions only the program would be getting executed okay if the if they are if they are not following those conditions then the program won't be getting executed okay so this is the one difference between C, uh, dfg and cdfg the cdfg models contain both data operations as well as control operations okay here we have both operations one is data as well as control whereas in data flow graph we had only data operations the cdfg uses data flow graph as element and conditional constructs as the decision makers it contains both data flow nodes and decision nodes whereas dfg contains only the data flow nodes so for example you consider the implementation of the cdfg for the following requirements that is we have one condition that is if if a flag is equal to 1 then only x x would be equal to a plus b but if flag is not equal to 1 that is if flag equal to 0 then it would be y is equal to a minus b okay so we have here one condition to be followed in the data flow graph okay that is one that's only one change that is here we have one condition that is if flag equal to 1 then x equal to a plus b then if flag is not equal to 1 then it would be y equal to a minus b okay so this requirement contains a decision making process so the cdfg model for the same is given in the figure which is shown down so you see here the control node is represented by a diamond block okay so see here this is the control node that is the uh, where from from which the program would be getting executed so here we have flag equal to 1 so that is the main control node that is represented in the diamond block which is the decision making element in the normal flowchart based design. The CDFG translates the requirement which is modeled to a concurrent process model. The decision on which process is to be executed is determined by the control node. Okay. So you see here, if flag equal to 1, uh, what would be the condition to, to be followed? That would be equal to x equal to a plus b, right? So you see here, if flag is 1, it would be given a and b are the inputs provided it would be getting added and the output produced is x right so this is the data flow node but if flag is not equal to one then directly uh, it, it would be given to y okay again the output would be a and b a and b are the inputs and they are uh, getting subtracted so the y equal to a minus b okay so this is one change in the cdfg where the condition would be coming into the picture okay if the condition is satisfied then only the output would be produced otherwise the output would be different okay so a real world example for modeling the embedded application using CDFG is capturing and saving of the image okay, to a format set by the user in a digital still camera. Okay, So this is a real time example of this CDFG. The decision on which the format of the image is stored, formats like JPEG, TIFF, BMP, etc. is controlled by the camera settings conf configured by the user. Okay, So this is the these are some of the key differences between DFG as well as CDFG. So hope you understood this very important okay one is the difference between uh, uh, c versus embedded c and one more is the difference between compiler versus cross compiler okay so these two differences are very important because these two differences are mentioned in the model paper as well so that's why i thought to do this okay so the difference between c and embedded c let us see now uh, if you come to the c language C is a well-structured, well-defined and standardized general purpose programming language with extensive bit manipulation support, whereas embedded C can be considered as a subset of conventional C language. So C offers a combination of the features of high-level language and assembly level language and helps in hardware access programming, that is the system level programming, that is whatever the system is uh, desirable to program. In the same way, the C also offers the combination of the features with respect to the program itself. Okay as well as the business package development, that is application development. Whereas the embedded C supports all the C instructions and incorporates a few target processor specific functions. Okay. So one change in the embedded C is that it is uh, since embedded systems are application and domain specific in nature. So that's why the embedded C supports all the instructions, but it is domain specific. It provides the set of instruction which is required for that application only. Okay. The conventional C language follows the ANSI standard and it incorporates various library files for a different operating system. The standard ANSI C library implementation is always tailored in the target processor or controller library files in the embedded C. A platform operating system specific application known as compiler is used for the conversion of programs written in C to the target processor 
on which the OS is running specific binary files. Okay, hence this platform is specific development. The implementation of target processor or controller in the specific function instruction depends upon the processor or controller requirements as well as supported by the cross compiler. Okay. So these are the few differences between C and embedded C. Okay. So please note it down. These things are very important. So this would be available in this notes only. Okay. At the last page of the notes, we have these two differences. Okay. C versus embedded C compiler versus cross compiler. Okay. So this is, these are the differences of compiler and cross compiler here. So I'm just going to read out two differences here. That is a compiler is a software tool that converts a source code written in high level language on top of a particular operating system running on a specific target processor architecture. Whereas cross compilers are the software tools used in cross platform development application. That is in cross platform development, the compiler running on the particular target processor or the operating system converts the source code to machine code. We have seen it earlier, right? It converts the source code that is the assembly language to the machine code that is that deals with these cross compilers. Okay. Here the operating system, here the operating system, the compiler program and the application making use of the source code run on the same target processor. Whereas in cross, uh, in cross compiler, since it is a cross platform development, the target processor would be varying. Okay. So these are the few differences here. Some four to five points are mentioned in each uh, column. So please uh, read it and uh, study it. Okay. So that's all guys. These are the things which I wanted to discuss to you all. Just uh, this is C versus embedded C. Please uh, uh, take a screenshot and read it. Again, compiler versus cross compiler. Take the screenshot and read it. Okay. These two questions are there in the model paper. So that's why I thought to cover it. So please go through it. Okay.